This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this sword logo using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So let me minimize this, and we'll get started here in Inkscape. And by the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons like you see here on my screen, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is click on View and make sure that's set to Custom. And then we're going to zoom in at one to one. Then we'll open up our line and distribute menu with this button right here. And we're going to want to make sure we have last selected chosen from that drop down. And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. So the first thing we're going to do is create our swords that you see there. So um, to do that, we're going to grab the squares and rectangles tool. And I'm just going to hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly uh, symmetrical square like that. I'm going to make that white. And then I'm going to come over to the Stroke Paint tab, and I'm going to click on the blue button to turn that on. And we're going to want to make sure we have a black stroke set. And the stroke style, we're going to have that set to, um, I guess we'll go with 7. And uh, we're going to want a square join and a square cap. And then we're going to convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And then we'll grab the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes right here to select those. And I'll click on this button right here that says insert new nodes into selected segments. Click that once. And then click on just, click and drag over just this middle node right here that we just created just to select that. And then hold control and just move this up about that much. This is going to be the tip of the sword. Okay, so then we'll take this, these two bottom nodes down here. And we'll hold control and drag these down about this much. And for what I'm going to do next, we're going to want to make sure, let me go to the select tool. And I'll come up here to Effect. We're going to want this button right here to the left turned off. See how I turn, have it turned off right there? Make sure that's turned off for this tutorial. So I'm going to take this with the Select tool, and I'm just going to hold Control and grab this bottom arrow and scale that down a bit. And uh, then we'll go back to the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and we'll take these two bottom nodes, hold Control, and click and drag these down about that much to make this uh, about that much longer. We'll go back to the Select tool. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the snap to cusp nodes and I'll grab the Bezier pen which is right here or you can just press, press B on the keyboard to grab that. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto this node right here and then hold click on that and then hold control and bring the line straight down to the bottom edge of the sword right there. And then click and then we can let go of control and hit enter and that's going to create a line right there. And under the stroke style tab we're going to make that the same width that the other stroke is which is 7 points so we'll click 7, hit enter. And there's our seven point stroke. And then we'll go back to the select tool, click off of that to deselect everything. And um, now I'm going to create the bottom part of the sword, which is the handle, which you see right here. To do that, I'm going to go to the uh, create squares and rectangles tool. And I'm just going to click and drag and create a rectangle going over the bottom right here like that. And then I'll convert that to a path as well by going to path, object to path. And then I'll click on the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool. I'm going to click and drag over all four of those nodes. And I'm going to click, the again, this button up here, Insert New Nodes into Selected Segments, like that. And then I'll click and drag over these two center nodes that we just created right there. And then I'll hold Control and just click and drag these down about that much. Now let me go back to the Select tool. And I'm going to hold Shift and click on the outer edge of the sword right there. And click on the... Um, center on vertical axis just to make sure that that's centered to the sword and then we can click off it to deselect everything and I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard a few times to zoom in on this and I'm going to take this and hold control and just move this up a little bit like that and um, the next thing we're going to do is create the uh, the rest of the handle here so let's again grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'm just going to click and drag and create another rectangle like that and I'm going to take this little circle node up top here. You know what? Let's go and turn off the snap to cusp nodes for now. I'm going to take this top node right, this top right node right here, and just pull this down to make that a rounded, to make the make that a rounded rectangle. Go back to the select tool, put this right about there. I'm going to lower that one step so it goes beneath that part of the handle. Position it right about there like that, and then hold shift and click on that part of the handle. And make sure that's centered on the vertical axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. So let's take this shape that we just created and let's duplicate that five times. So we'll hit Control D to duplicate that. We're actually going to duplicate it four times. So hit Control D, one, two, three, four. 
and then hold control and take this top one and put this over here and then hold control take this top one put it over here hold control take this other one bring this over here and there should be one more we could hold control and take this and bring this over here so there should be five rectangles like that and I'm just gonna make sure that I didn't leave any okay good alright so what we can do now is let's click and drag over all of these five rectangles we just created and make sure that they are spaced out evenly by clicking on the button that says make vertical gaps between objects equal and that'll space them all out evenly and then um, let's come over to this uh, circles and ellipses tool and I'm just gonna hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a circle a perfectly round circle like that that's pretty good we'll go back to the select tool I'm gonna put this right about here then I'll hold shift and click on one of these rectangles and just center it on the vertical axis just to make sure it's centered and we could hold shift and click on that rectangle to deselect it so we just have the circle selected and then we could duplicate this circle by hitting control D and then hold control and shift and scale this in about that much and let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and see how this looks alright it's um we can click off it to deselect everything how I've designed it here the, the handles a little a little too thick in proportion to the rest of the sword so I'm just gonna click and drag over those elements of the uh, the handle right there and then hold control and just scale it down a little bit maybe about that much that's pretty good click off of it to deselect and uh, let me take another look at this I might have made the short the sword a little too short um, I'm just gonna make the sword a little longer just to be safe so let me click on this line right here in the center and then hold shift and click on the uh, the outer edge of the sword right there so we have both of those selected I'll go to the edit pads by nodes tool and I'll click and drag over all of those top nodes right there and then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag them up just so that this sword is a little longer okay so let me go back to the select tool I'm gonna click and drag over all of that and group it together and then uh, I'm going to click on it another time to get the rotation handles and I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and just rotate this around until it's sitting up like that and then I'm going to duplicate this by hitting control D and then I'll flip it horizontally by clicking the button that says flip selected objects horizontally like that and uh, maybe I'll hold control and just move this over to the right a little bit so the next step is to create the um, polygon or the hexagon inside of um, over going over the swords right there so let's come over to this the uh, stars and polygons tool we're gonna want polygons selected from this from this uh, menu here we want six corners rounded and randomized uh, both set to zero and then we could hold control and shift and create this uh, polygon so that it's uh, about that size and we want the corners going vertically like that and go to the select tool put this right here I'm gonna hold shift and click on one of these swords and I'm just gonna make sure it's centered on the horizontal axis and then I'm gonna click and drag over all of it the whole thing right there and I'm just gonna make sure it's spaced out evenly by coming over to the, to the distribute panel and clicking the button that says make horizontal gaps between objects equal and that'll space everything out evenly so let me click off of that to deselect I'll click on just this polygon hold control and shift and I'm just gonna scale this up a little more it's a little too small that's good and then I'm gonna duplicate that polygon by hitting control D and then I'll hold control and shift and scale that down about that much and what I want to do now is I want to make this whole thing a little smaller because it's taking up too much of the screen so let me click and drag over all of it but the thing is if we go and just hold control and shift and scale it down it's gonna keep the stroke at the same uh, at the same weight so in order to avoid that I'm gonna go ahead and temporarily turn this effect on that one that I told you to have off I'm gonna turn that on temporarily and it'll allow me to scale this down without affecting the width of the stroke too much that's pretty good and we could turn that back on I mean turn that back off click off to deselect everything and the next step is gonna be uh, I'm gonna put a little line going across the center here just for uh, just for the effect of it and um, to do that I'm gonna grab the uh, I'm gonna turn on the snap to cusp nodes then grab the bezier pen which is right here or just press B on the keyboard snap to this corner and click and then snap to that corner down there and click and then hit enter and we'll go back to the select tool and let me click on this shape right here and come over to the stroke style tab just to, uh, tab just to see which uh, weight this is now this is now a 3.113 stroke so whatever that number is for you you could just 
highlight it, then hit Control C to copy it, and then click on this uh, this line we just created. And we're going to make that the same width. We'll just highlight that and hit Control V to paste it. Hit Enter, and that's now the same width. We want we want the strokes to be consistent all the way through. So let me click off of that deselect. And next, we're going to create this uh, little makeshift ribbon going around the object here. So let's grab the squares and rectangles tool and just click and drag to create a rectangle like that. And it's giving us rounded corners. We don't want that. So I'm just going to click on this button up here that says make corner sharp. And it should have automatically changed the width of the stroke to the same width you just entered. So it should be, if not, you could just come over to the stroke style tab, highlight that, hit control V to paste in our value and hit enter. Uh, but otherwise that should be all right. We'll go to the select tool and I'm going to hold shift and click on one of those polygons and make sure it's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect everything. And we'll click on this uh, object now. What we're going to do is we're going to create the little fins going behind the little fins of the ribbon there. So with this selected, I'm just going to hit Control D to duplicate that. And then we'll come over to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And we're going to have to convert that to a path first. So let's go to Path, Object to Path. And now we have these four nodes here at the corner. So I'm going to click and drag over these two nodes right here. And I'll click the button that says Insert New Nodes into Selected Segments. And there's our node right there. So let's click on just that one so we have that highlighted. And then hold Control and just click and drag this to the right a little bit. And we can click and drag over the, these two nodes over here on the right. And hold Control and bring these in over here. Then we go back to the Select tool and we're going to put this up about over here. Let's turn off the Snap to Cusp nodes for now so that doesn't get in our way. I'm going to put this over here up into the left. I'm going to lower this to the bottom right here, lower selection to the bottom. And put that right about there like that. And then I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'll flip that vertically and horizontally. Actually, you don't have to flip it vertically, but um, it does the same thing. I'm going to put this down here to the lower right. Lower that down to the bottom. And I'm going to try to position this at about the same position over here as it is over there. We'll just, we'll just have to eyeball it for now. But if we want to make it exact, what we could do is we could just leave it right there like that. And then hold shift and click on the other fin. And we can group them together. And then hold shift and click on the uh, rectangle here on top. And just center that on the vertical and horizontal axis. And that'll be evenly spaced out like that. Then we can ungroup them. Okay, so the final step, uh, we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. It looks like the final step here is to put these little... Uh, this little makeshift um, shadow effect right there. So uh, I'm going to zoom in on this left hand side. I'll press plus on the keyboard a few times to zoom in. And we'll grab the Bezier pen, which is right here, or you just press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to start this line going inside of this line right here and click and hold control and bring this line out to about there. And then click, let go of control and hit enter. And we want to make this line the same thickness that the rest of them are. So let's come back over here to the width. Uh, highlight that, hit Control V, hit Enter. Go back to the Select tool, and I'm going to duplicate this, hit Control D, and then hold Control and move this down here. And I'm going to duplicate this a few more times. So let me hit Control D again, hold Control, move this down here. Control D again, hold Control, move this down here. And maybe I'll make two more of these. So I'll just hold Shift and click the other one, and hit Control D, and hold Control and bring these down here here. Maybe one more. Let me click this one. Hit Control D. Hold Control. Move that down there. And maybe I'll just move this down here. Move that up. That's actually good right there. And once we have our lines created, we can click and drag over all of those lines right there to select them all. And we're going to want to make them spaced out evenly by clicking uh, Make Vertical Gaps Between Objects Equal. And then we could uh, uh, group them together with this button. And then hold shift and click on the, uh, the uh, rectangle right there and just make sure that's centered on the horizontal axis. And then click off of the deselect everything. So let's click on just these lines and ungroup them. And then click off them to deselect everything. If you look at here in the thumbnail, you'll see I have them uh, at different widths like that. So uh, let me minimize that. Um, I'm going to take the two or the one, I'm going to take the one in the center. And I'll go to the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and I'm going to hold Control and grab this node and bring this in about that much. Then I'll click that one, and then hold Shift and click on this one. 
click and drag over those two nodes and hold control and bring them to the left not quite as far as you did the original one maybe about there is good click that shape and then hold shift and click that shape click and drag over both of those hold control and bring this in about that much and that's pretty good we can go back to the select tool and click and drag over those lines again and group them together and then we can duplicate them by hitting control D and we're gonna flip them uh, horizontally and then hold control and just click and drag these over to the right and by the way I'm moving the page around by pressing down on the mouse wheel and moving the mouse so I'll hold control and just bring these over here and we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and click off of the graphic to deselect everything and if you want you can put some kind of text in there you can put some kind of uh, icons in here or maybe like a star or something whatever you'd like to do with this design but that's pretty much it if you have any questions let me know and as always thank you for watching